And this is from uh, Dog Pound Daily. Three potential breakout stars for the Browns in 2024. Uh, number three might be a guy that you know has some of those similar traits. Cedric Tillman, wide receiver. Um, he was kind of singled out end of mini camp by um, Kevin Stefanski. So if he can come in and, and do some work in training camp, he might earn some some significant playing time. Number two, Alex Wright. Some might argue he kind of broke out last year. Um, be interesting to see if he can take it up a level. Number one, they go with Jerry Judy. Um, and if you're talking breakout from Jerry Judy, uh, he needs to get 1,000 yards because he's done pretty much everything but that um, so far in the NFL as well. If you're talking Jerry Judy as a breakout player, and look, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it's a wild thing to say, but if you're talking Jerry Judy as your breakout guy, what you're probably saying is that Jerry Judy is going to put up the top receiving numbers on this team this year. Might lead his team in receptions, could lead it in touchdown. Maybe not all three, possibly, but certainly could vie for you know being the team leader in touchdown reception, team leader in receptions, team leader in yards. I think the Browns have a lot of faith, and they believe that Jerry Judy is totally capable of that. Again, it wasn't the trade itself. It wasn't the compensation itself. It was the contract extension right away that told you how much the Cleveland Browns think of a guy like Jerry Judy. Cedric Tillman, you know, and this is one where maybe one might cancel out the other. Um, but, you know, I had a couple of friends that were at OTAs and they's like, they said you just could not believe it when you looked at Cedric Tillman. Like he just looked like a different type of guy. Like he didn't necessarily like a lot of people were like, 19's really going with the wide receivers? Are we sure he shouldn't be going over with David Njoku in the tight ends? It's just the way he's built. Um, the Tennessee offense didn't really do him a lot of favors. He wasn't necessarily a good fit there. Um, and, you know, as much as I do think it was a problematic time for Tillman last year, um, it certainly can't be easy when you are the rookie and every time you turn around, you have a different quarterback. But there were a lot of lessons to be learned. And, you know, you know, you know, you know Joe Flacco, I know his guy who was trying to be pretty vocal with him and, you know, tried to work with him and say, hey, you know, I understand that this is, a, you know, look, there's ways we do it in film. There's ways we do it in practice. But every now and then there's adjustments that got to be made within the game. So technically, yes, you always take this and it's nine steps cut here, this, that, the other thing. Or now it's maybe eight and a half or, you know, these guys are covering it this way. So it's eight or it's 10 because, you know, they're laying off. You got to eat up that cushion between yourself and the defensive back. So Cedric Tillman should be interesting because, you know, there should have been a lot of growth and a lot of things Cedric Tillman could have taken from, you know, the 2023 season put into his offseason workouts. And let's see if he can apply that to greater success in 2024. The defensive side of the ball, I certainly think that Alex Wright is probably one. Uh, that certainly needs to be mentioned. I think he showed signs towards the end of 2022 when he was getting a lot more playing time. Um, I wouldn't be stunned if Alex Wright was maybe second or third on this team as far as the defense bends are concerned in sacks. I think there's a chance he could maybe have more sacks than, you know, Okoronkwo. Maybe, you know, if Zadarius Smith, you know, takes another step the wrong way, like it seemed like he did last year, how there's more opportunity for Alex Wright. Um, certainly, you know, there's cert a lot of names uh, as far as, you know, what can be done on the defensive side of the ball and guys that can step up. For me, I also, it's not necessarily, you know, what he's going to do as far as, you know, stats and things like that. But Jordan Hicks is going to be interesting because everybody talked about Anthony Walker and the leadership and the type of guy he was and the young guys gravitated to him and they all kind of got mentally better. But you have a better linebacker in Jordan Hicks than Anthony Walker was. And Jordan Hicks can do all of those things that Anthony Walker did as far as the leadership aspect, as far as working with younger players and saying, yep, you know what? Coach said this, coach said that. Get, I faced this team seven times, and that guard, when his foot is pigeon-toed, I'm telling you right now, he's pulling. And it's just something different than you get from somebody that's been out there so much. Jordan Hicks, you know, for as you know, quiet as it was and not a very heavy monetary free agent signing, that one could pay big, big dividends because, again, you're getting a guy with all the leadership aspect of Anthony Walker, but you're getting a guy with a lot more success on the field over the last two years.